Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Still a Seller's Market, How to Find Relief. I'm Terry Roberts with DMAI's Empowerment.com, and DMAI is the trade association for convention and visitors bureaus, both um, domestically and internationally. So we look forward to another great webinar today, and I would like to first introduce our panelists, but before I do, um, we'd like to also thank Chris Wessel with ePro Direct. ePro is our monthly sponsor, and uh, we sure appreciate their partnership, and Chris will be talking to us a little bit more at the end of our webinar. So welcome, Lindsay Colbreth. Lindsay, it's so nice to have you. Lindsay is with SPR. She is the Senior Director of Business Development and Marketing. And STR, for those of you who are not familiar, is really the leading authority on hotel industry performance trends. STR provides their clients, which typically include hotel operators, developers, uh, financiers, analysts, and then all the suppliers to the hotel industry, access to this major hotel research and data with a group of regular and custom reports. Chris was just commenting to Lindsay that when he came from the hotel business that getting his regular weekly star report was part of um, just a, a normal course of doing business. And Lindsay laughed and said, yeah, you either love us or hate us, right, on, on that day, the star report coming out. But Lindsay is also featured as a guest speaker for many hotel industry presentations, and she's a member of the American Hotel and Lodging Association's Women in Lodging and was a, uh, a founding council member of the Under 30 Gateway. So Lindsay, you bring a lot of experience and certainly a really interesting background to this presentation. So we're excited that you get to kind of pull back the curtain, if you will, um, to hotel trends and we look forward to talking to you today. Thank you very much, Terry. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to join you today. It's certainly a, a pleasure to participate in this webinar um, and to be given the opportunity to share some hotel data with you. Now, as yes. Terry mentioned, I'm sure many of the DMOs here um, are familiar with what we do, um, but for the meeting planners that may not be as familiar, and Terry, do I have control yet? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you control in um, right now, and I just wanted to um, before I do, just kind of let everyone know that um, where we're gonna go with the roadmap. So Lindsay, you sorry are we're gonna that. kind of pull. That's okay. We're gonna pull back the curtain, and you're going to kind of be able to first give us some really global high-level look at STR data and trends and forecasts. I'm really excited about that. And then we'll kind of conclude with really understanding how planners who can really access that destination um, specific market information through their, their CVBs. And we kind of hope the point of this webinar is the ability to kind of have this overview. Lindsay, I think you'll agree. Let's planners Number one, manage their expectations as they go out to negotiate in the marketplace. And it also, I think, knowledge is power. It really helps them improve their negotiation skills. Would you agree, Lindsay? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so now you have control. Perfect. Um, so as I was saying, just for the meeting planners who may not be as familiar um, with STR, we have been in business for over 30 years now. And we're considered to be the leader in hotel benchmarking. But we not only work with hotels, um, we obviously work with DMOs, with meeting planners, with industry partners. And our main focus is to be able to provide um, data so that we're assisting organizations as they make um, those business decisions and make not only good decisions, but data-driven decisions um, as they go through their day-to-day -day, um, responsibilities. So from a meeting planner's perspective, we certainly understand that what is good news to a hotelier may not always be good news to you or to your clients, especially in terms of rate. Um, so hopefully the information that I'll share with you today will help you as you set expectations based on current market performance, as well as provide you some tips to 
um, your negotiation. So just to give you a quick little roadmap during our time together, um, we'll look at total U.S. performance and then dive a little bit deeper into our segmentation data, um, which is looking at group and transient business. Um, so you'll have some better insights into group performance. And then we'll wrap up our time um, looking forward into pipelines, so what's in development, and our forecast for the remainder of 2016 and 2017. So as we get started, I'm sure this is not new news to you, but 2015 was a banner year for the hotel industry. Um, as you can see, there was growth across the board. Um, we had more rooms available than ever before at 1.8 billion rooms, and the industry sold more rooms than they ever had before at 1.2 billion rooms, um, which gave us an occupancy at 65.6%. Um, you can see average daily rate surpassed um, that $120 mark. It was at 4.5%, um, giving us a revenue per available room of $79, um, which was up 6.3%. So not only was there growth across the board, um, there were records across the board as well. So a record for every single key performance indicator that we track for the industry um, was at record levels. But really, I think the question is, as we move into 2016 and almost into the second quarter, is figuring out, was 2015 the peak um, for the industry? Um, and that's what we'll try and dig into a bit with the data that we're going to look at. So looking at a long-term history for supply and demand, and this is on a 12-month moving average basis just to take out some of the seasonality. And you can see as we go back, um, really back to 1990, the downturns that the industry has faced. Um, you can see that dark line for demand um, shows those, shows those um, cycles where we've had downturns, and with each one, they became more and more severe. And what we didn't expect with the most recent downturn is for that to really turn around and um, grow quickly and rebound as quickly and as strongly as it did. So you can see that demand peaked at nearly 8% growth. And we've been stable. So growth for demand um, has been positive for over four and a half years. Um, and while we've had that increase in demand, you can see that supply line, so that teal, has been rather muted. So about um, 1% or lower um, for over four years where we've had an increase in demand and fairly muted um, supply for the industry. Now even while that supply has been muted, 1% um, for the industry can still translate into a lot more new rooms that are coming onto the market. Um, you can see for each month in 2015, um, there were at least 1 million more rooms available than there was the prior month in 2014. And when we got into November and December of last year, there was actually 2 million more rooms available. Um, so certainly supply can fluctuate for an individual market, um, but with this much new supply coming into the industry from a hotelier's perspective, it's certainly very difficult um, to be able to keep up with that. But from a meeting planner's perspective, this could be a good problem to have when you have that much more supply and potentially more hotels um, to be able to host your meetings. And Lindsay, when you talk about that supply, because I read a lot about um, how a lot of that supply of hotel rooms is in limited service markets versus full service markets. Is that true? It is true, um, and we certainly have a slide that will show exactly that in a little bit. Um, so looking at this same trend line for ADR and occupancy, just how we saw those dips with demand, um, we saw the same dips both in occupancy and ADR, but they were even more severe. Um, it, but they didn't rebound um, quite as strongly as we saw with, de um, as we saw with demand. What we're looking at for rate has been around 4% um, for the past couple of years. Um, while we saw occupancy pretty stable, um, but you can see it starting to decelerate rather rapidly. Now, not to say we're not seeing declines, um, but we're just seeing that rate of growth um, starting to tick down. 
Now moving into figuring out for this question, how long um, will growth last for the hotel industry? And this is looking at the prior cycles for that revenue per available room um, for the industry. And you can see that first cycle lasted 80 months, where we had 80 months consecutive um, growth for RevPAR. And that next one was about 30 months. There was just a little dip. So if you combine that, it's really about 110 months. Um, that second cycle you're looking at was about 56 months. And the cycle that we're in right now just hit 71 months. So there's been 71 consecutive months of RevPAR growth. Um, you can see it's starting to dip down a little bit. So that pace of RevPAR growth is slowing. Um, but we do think that there are anywhere probably between 10 and 18 more months um, in this cycle where we will continue to see RevPAR growth for the hotel industry. Now as we look at specific chain scales, so our chain scales range from luxury through economy, um, this is just to show you where that RevPAR growth is coming from. So for the past 12 months, um, represented in that blue line, there is occupancy growth for all of those chain scales. You can see a little bit more on the limited service side, um, about 1.5% to 2% growth for occupancy. Um, but primarily where our RevPAR growth is being driven from in the hotel industry is rates. And that's ranging anywhere from 3 to 4% um, ADR growth and giving these chain scales anywhere from a 4 to 6% RevPAR growth over the past 12 months. Um, and that's a trend that we think will um, continue throughout this year and into next year as well. And Lindsay, can you go back to that slide? I just want to ask you a question. Sure. So would you think that the majority, not all obviously, but the majority of the hotels that are really vested in the meetings marketplace, the majority of meetings are occurring in that upper mid-scale and mid-scale type hotels? Most of our, the larger meetings that you look at are actually going to be in upscale or above. So okay. upper upscale is probably the biggest chain scale in terms of hotels that are hosting some of those larger meetings. Um, and one point here where you're seeing only about a half a percent increase in occupancy is a lot of um, luxury and upper upscale hotels are almost at full capacity. So there's not a lot of room for growth in terms of occupancy because you know, some hotels are just selling out. Interesting. So as we move on, just like not all, all hotel chain scales are created equal, not all markets are created equal um, either. And what I wanted to show you here is STR tracks over, or Yes, yeah, tracks over 160 markets in the U.S. alone. And then this is looking at year in 2015. And I just wanted to show you the top five markets based on RevPAR and then the two bottoms. So certainly there are markets that are doing very well. You can see Phoenix, um, almost a 13% RevPAR growth in 2015. We've got double-digit growth for Dallas, for Nashville, for Tampa, um, and Anaheim almost at 10%. But then you also have Houston and New York, and two markets that saw RevPAR declines in 2015. Now, obviously, both of those markets have, you know, interesting things going on right now with oil issues and supply issues. Um, but that being said, there are certainly markets that you can still find a deal um, or better rates if you are willing to you know, look at different destinations in terms of um, where you want to host your meetings. Now specifically looking at transient performance, so this is looking at our segmentation data. So for all luxury and upper upscale hotels, we are looking at transient performance, which would be any room booked and kind of um, that one to nine range, um, STR's definition of group business would be 10 or more um, rooms in a block. So looking at this transient um, slide for demand, we are looking at, again, a 12-month moving average going back to 2012. And you can see we've had positive growth in both demand and ADR for the past four years. Um, really strong, started off at almost 6% increase for demand 
and right now we're at about 2.5%. So you can see that rate of growth is starting to slow, uh, but it's still positive. You can see that transient rates for the past 12 months have been nearly um, 4% at 3.7%. So very strong performance in terms of that transient business. Lindsay, would you explain to planners who might not be familiar how transient growth affects group ceilings um, that different hotels are willing to um, offer and you know how many group rooms they may make available based upon transient demand, how that affects that equation? Absolutely. And it may make a little bit more sense. I will go ahead and flip to this group slide. Um, and kind of talk to this. So um, as Terry was mentioning, certainly transient can highly affect group business. You know, if there are a lot of um, transient customers that are filling up hotels, when they start to look at group business, if they are getting preferred rates from their transient guests and their hotel is nearly full, then they aren't going to be as flexible in terms of pricing and dates when they are working um, with a piece of group business. Um, so that's kind of why you can see um, when you're looking at this trend line for group business, some of these things you know, that are affected. You can see when we had that dip in demand, um, we did have rates that were pretty stable, and I think a lot of that goes back to a lot of group businesses booked months, if not years, in advance. So even though we're seeing a dip in demand for a certain time period, group rates are still holding strong. Um, but the key to look at here for group business is really to find out where there are hotels or where there are holes. Um, so if you're looking at a market and they've got lower occupancies, for Sunday, Monday, or maybe it's a Thursday, Friday, um, specifically even looking at group business, then you know you have a little bit more flexibility um, when you're working with those hotels because they may need that piece of business um, versus times where they're full with transient um, customers and as in their negotiations. But what we're looking at here for um, group business, we're almost at 4% growth for rates, which have um, held steady. Um, you can see that demand for the group business has started to slow, and we're about 1.9% um, for group business. Now, looking at some specific markets, these are our top 25 markets in the U.S., again, looking for the full year of 2015. Um, so here there were 21 out of our top 25 markets that had positive RevPAR growth. Um, again, Phoenix over 13%. You've got 9% for Norfolk and San Diego. So there are a lot of markets that did really well in terms of group RevPAR growth last year. However, if you look on the right-hand side, there are some markets that had uh, more muted growth, New Orleans, Minneapolis, and Denver, all around 1%. And then we had four markets that actually had rough hard decline. So looking at St. Louis, Houston, New York, and Oahu, you know, obviously New York, New York and Oahu are you know, higher rated markets, so you may not be looking at those markets anyway, but maybe you're wanting or willing to send your group business to St. Louis or Houston. And um, so there's obviously some markets um, that will have a little bit more room in terms of flexibility. Um, for those negotiations. Now, we oh, know that I think also, you know, there's a there's a there's a customer, there's a group customer for each and every one of these markets. So, you know, New York, for example, has a, a, a very strong um, group customer base. So, it just because you see them in this equation, not seeing RevPAR growth, doesn't necessarily mean that group business is down because they have such strong group business to begin with and such high rated business to begin with. Would that, would that be, would that hold true, Lindsay? Oh, certainly. And there's going to be some markets that, you know, have really tough comps that they're dealing with, that they had a really strong um, year in 2014 versus this year. So certainly, you know, these declines don't mean that those markets aren't performing well in terms of group business. 
Uh, and I know that it's not only price that determines where you are going when you're um, putting these meetings together. Um, so I wanted to show um, some results from our destination map study. This is a study that we conduct every two years um, for meeting planners that conduct meetings in the top 40 North America markets. So you may have participated in this study before, um, but this is looking at items that meeting planners consider to be very important in their site selection. And I believe this particular question had about 65 um, options that they could choose from, and this is the top eight. Um, and these top eight answers could really be bucketed into three groups, so cost, convenience, and clean and attractiveness. Um, so out of the 65 um, options, all of these were either at 70% or more in terms of meeting planners saying that these are very important um, when they're doing their site selection. Um, so you can see kind of at the top of that list, um, they want to choose a destination that is good value for the money. Um, travel costs obviously play a big role in that, um, even though it's a little bit down from um, 2013, so I guess it's not as big of a deal because they, there's other factors that go into that. Um, and probably the biggest um, option in terms of very important is the food and lodging costs. Um, so they want to make sure that those are in control. Um, you see that second bucket, so meeting planners want to make sure that the destination is easy for delegates to get to, they need convenient airline service, and obviously the destination has, enough, has to have enough hotel rooms available to be able to even have that meeting there. And then, then kind of that third bucket, with around 70%, um, they want to make sure that it's in a clean and attractive city and that the conference hotels are attractive. And so for any meeting planner, um, that is determining destinations, you know, there are obviously a lot of things that go into that selection other than just um, the cost of the hotel itself because obviously there's a lot of other things in terms of food um, and cost to get to that destination. So that's just, the hotel is just one piece of it and we're well aware of that. Another resource um, that it can be very helpful for not only DMOs but for meeting planners as well is a compression study. Um, so this is a report that many DMOs will get to um, be able to determine how much of a value a particular piece of business or an event um, is bringing them and should they try to win that piece of business again. And so from a meeting planner's perspective, this may be something that you want to partner um, with a DMO on, so that on the flip side, you can prove the value of the meeting that you're bringing to a market. So compression studies um, will show you at what point does an event impact a market, either positively or potentially negatively. Um, so the percentages are shown here. This is just an example, um, but this is bucketing out of a particular market, and you can see at what point does a particular um, size group impact the market. So if you're looking at downtown, if an event has between 1,200 and 1,500 attendees at that level, it's going to impact the downtown market with about a 10% rug par um, boost. Um, but you can see if it's a smaller group, around 300 attendees, it's actually causing um, rev car declines for that part of the market. So not all meetings are going to impact particular pieces of the market in the same way, and some um, won't impact it as positively as others will. So a compression study is a great way to show at what point um, does the piece of business that you're bringing to a particular destination positively impacting that destination. Now, as we kind of look forward into um, what is coming into a market, it's important to take a look at new supply that's in development um, because this will impact um, a meeting planner's ability to bring in groups. So if a, if a market doesn't have enough supply, certainly 
Um, that's probably a market that's off the table. Um, but if they have new rooms in development and are bringing on new hotels, then that may be a market that you can consider again. Um, so this is looking at pipeline. Currently, over 150,000 rooms that are under construction. And you can see that's over 16%. So a lot of new rooms um, in development, just like we saw on that earlier slide, this will certainly translate into um, a lot more rooms that um, are available on any given night. And you can see for the total under contract that makes up those three phases, there are nearly a half a million rooms that are in our under contract um, pipeline. Now, in terms of where um, those hotel rooms will be slotted, this is to Terry's earlier point that a lot of these new rooms will actually be limited service properties. So nearly 70% of all new rooms that are under construction will either be an upscale or upper mid-scale hotel. So there's very few new luxury and upper upscale hotels being built, um, which does give us some um, concern if we don't have a lot of those larger properties being built, but we have a, an increase in group business, um, where will those groups conduct their meetings and potentially they may have to be off-site from a hotel. Maybe they're in a convention center um, or other meeting space. But um, as a whole, new development is coming into that limited service segment. And finally, for pipeline in terms of where um, those new rooms are going, about 50% of the 150,000 rooms are actually going to be a part of the top 26 markets. Um, you can see Orlando is at the bottom of that list. They've got about 2% of their existing supply under construction. And then all the way at the top, you've got New York with 14,500 rooms under construction, which is the equivalent of 12% of their existing supply. So a lot of development coming into that market. Um, and they've you know, got an issue with supply right now, so it'll be interesting to see how they'll be able to manage and those new rooms that are coming in. And finally, as we look forward into the remainder of 2016 and 2017, I wanted to share STR's forecast with you. Um, so when we updated our forecast about three months ago, we increased the supply forecast. Um, so based on our pipeline numbers, we realized and that there are more and more rooms coming in, and those supply numbers should go up. And so for 2016, we're anticipating um, a 1.7% increase in supply um, with a demand of 2.3%, which is giving us a pretty muted occupancy growth of 0.6%. I mean, so you can see that the majority of hotels REVPAR increases for 2016, we are anticipating coming from rate. Um, and really that same story for 2017 as well. Um, so we're anticipating rate growth at 4.3%, giving um, the industry a 4.5% increase in rev par. Um, now certainly there's going to be some markets that don't perform exactly like this, but as a whole um, for the industry, we're anticipating most of the gains um, to be coming from rate, at least for the remainder of this year and into 2017. So just a couple of takeaways for you, of course. Um, there's been several slides looking at supply. So there's a levels of supply, um, more rooms than we've ever had available, and there's more on the way. Um, we certainly think that that pipeline will continue to increase um, throughout the next um, year and into 2017. Of course, we've seen that the rates of rate growth are slowing. Um, so with all the new rooms that are coming in, there's going to be some markets where that supply is just at kind of peak levels and hoteliers don't feel the pricing power and they start to um, discount their hotels again, or they're more willing to negotiate for that group piece of business. Um, so that's certainly an opportunity for meeting planners to take advantage um, when you're starting to see those rates coming down, especially on the transient side, because then there's more of an opportunity to get that piece of business at a lower rate for the group piece as well. But just for overall growth of the hotel industry, we're cautiously optimistic that the industry will remain healthy 
and strong um, throughout 2016 and 17. Um, and then just wanted to share kind of the importance of staying informed. If you have questions, whether you're a meeting planner or a DMO, about how you can really um, grow your business and get information, please give us a call or email us. Um, we'll help you figure out the questions that you're trying to solve, whether it's rate negotiations or you want more information about supply, and then we'll help match that to the products that we have. Um, so whether you're using STR or another industry resource, um, we certainly think that it's invaluable um, to really have your foundation start at the research level. So here is my contact information. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, and I will either um, help you or point you in the right direction. Well, Lindsay, that's a really great and a very, very comprehensive um, look at the U.S. marketplace, and, and we thank you. It, it certainly lines up with what we hear in our planner surveying about kind of the frustration of planners trying to be competitive in the group marketplace, and it looks like with the healthy market probably extending, as you said, another 17 months, that it will continue to be one in which um, negotiators really do need to be well informed. I just like to, yeah, I just like to close by saying that, you know, we, we like to think of your CVB experts as really the first best point of contact um, in, in any marketplace across the country. And, and they provide a lot of different types of consultative advice, but I think the one that most clearly lines up with what you've discussed is their ability to give a planner really some analytical process and 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 you know this is um, a quote from Bob Gilbert who's with HSNAI and you know he really talks about exactly what you said is that in today's market environment you know we're looking at strong growth and that a local destination marketing organization is really your your best source in terms of getting the lay of the land and I keep having conversations across the market. I was just in Chicago at MPI Next and had a good planner session. And, and we talked a lot about, do you put your RFP out there in the marketplace blind? Like, are you just sending out your wish list without first really understanding and that you're headed into. And so I put together this slide, um, and I think that these are the things that you might want to have a conversation with your CVB salesperson prior to sending your RFP, that, and that all of the destination experts out there are willing and wanting to have these conversations with planners, and that um, they're the, really your best opportunity to understand seasonality in a marketplace. They can tell you about historical demand, what is peak season, what is shoulder season, and what need season looks like in all their destinations. And it varies. What, what may be a very high demand time in one destination is a very low demand time in another destination based upon transient demand, uh, weather, special events. Um, and I think you really brought it up with um, when you're talking about transient demand, that transient demand definitely affects the most desirable arrival and departure patterns. And I had a planner say to me, you know, hotels and, and DMOs are always asking me, you know, are your dates flexible? And I always say no. And then finally someone said to me, let me tell you what flexibility means to you. If you could arrive on a Monday versus a Tuesday, it's a $65 difference in rate in a particular city. And she goes, oh, all of a sudden I decided I'm flexible, right? So we need to be having these conversations. Um, you can also have a conversation with your um, CVB expert about, you know, what is going on in the, the marketplace. Are there citywide over your dates? Are there major local events that either could positively affect your ability to negotiate or maybe be a negative? And last but not least, they are certainly aware of major cancellations in their destinations, so opportunities perhaps in the short term, and also special offers that the destination is providing or that specific hotels are providing based upon need. So we um, hope that our planners who have joined us who want to connect with destination experts will um, look for them at empowerment.com. That's our industry aggregated web portal 
155 destinations who are vested in the meetings market house their information there to give you, um, you know, kind of a one-stop shop, if you will, a one-stop place to connect as opposed to having to search online for different marketplaces. And last but not least, I know, Lindsay, everybody will be asking about their CMP credit for this really informative session. And a half hour of um, Domain A strategic planning has been awarded by CIC. And you'll get your certificate, as always, along with our webinar recording in the next five business days. So look for that next week in your email. Make sure you check your spam, because we often end up there with our certificates. So we want to make sure that you get that as well. So in closing, um, I'd like to introduce um, Chris Wessel. Um, he is our sponsor um, with ePro Direct. And Chris joins us each month. And we're so appreciative of that. And we will take some questions. I know many of you have put questions in. So um, let me let Chris just introduce himself for about a minute. And then Elaine, um, who's been looking at our question board, will give Lindsay any questions that the audience has. So hey, Chris. Hey, Terry. Thank you so much. And as always, we love and value our partnership with you. You guys do some of the best webinars I've been on, and I attend quite a few of them. So, um, And Lindsay, I cannot tell you, I am a data guy. This was so terrific. And, and as I mentioned to you, it brought me kind of back to my Marriott days. I think I could almost smell my general manager's office, the, the, the <laughs> smell in his office. It was, it was that significant. I actually miss quite a bit going through. Um, those reports and getting those insights and that information. I still have a good buddy at Marriott that actually shares some information with me, but certainly not in as much detail. So great job, Lindsay. Thank you. I'm sure everybody uh, could find a lot of value in that. Um, anyway, my name is Chris Wessel. I am a, a, a co-owner of a company called ePro Direct. Uh, you may or may not have heard of us, but we've been around for about 15 years. Uh, we're a hospitality, marketing, and technology company. Um, we started uh, by becoming a, or started out originally as an email marketing service provider exclusively for the hospitality industry. So we work with about 300 hotels and destinations every year uh, on doing uh, all different types of email programs for them or managing and facilitating all the email programs for them. Uh, and then uh, a lot of the hotels and destinations specifically, uh, we have a, uh, a considerable size database that we target for them for group business. Uh, we also work with some different companies, associations, and other meeting planners on managing their, uh, any of their email programs. We've kind of, uh, you know, have invested quite a bit in technology and tools and resources, and we have email marketing down to a science. So uh, what we like to tell our customers, if they're not receiving a dollar back for every $44 or uh, $44 back for every dollar spent on email marketing, we can probably help them because that's really what the return should be. That's why we believe so much in email marketing. Um, on the other side, we also create event apps uh, that we've been doing now for about five years or so. Uh, we actually surveyed our database of 80,000 meeting planners and kind of asked them what they'd want in an event app if it could be the perfect solution for them. And uh, we had our development, our technology team go ahead and develop exactly what they asked for. So things like price point and what platforms it would work on and certain types of features and functionality and all that kind of thing. And we have a pretty spectacular product um, as far as event apps go. So if anyone has any questions or wants to check us out, they can go to uh, eprodirect.com. That's E-P-R-O-D-I-R-E-C-T.com. Um, or certainly, if anyone wants to email me, they're welcome to do so as well at chris.wessel at eprodirect.com. And anybody that might be responsible for their email marketing programs, we're actually offering uh, free email marketing audits right now, which is a pretty extensive audit of what you're currently doing, and then giving you some free advice and prioritizing uh, suggestions on how to improve your email marketing and um, uh, to, to, to get a stronger a return on your investment. So if anyone's interested in that, they can certainly email me as well. But thank you very, very much, Terry. Thank you, Chris, as always. Really great to have you. So Elaine um, has been watching our question board. So Elaine, um, want to know if there's any questions from the audience um, that you'd like to process with Lindsay. Absolutely. Thank you. Great job, Lindsay. Um, so one thing, a few people have been asking very specifically about certain destinations. Obviously, you touched on a broad picture here. So are CVBs, um, some planners are wondering, are the CVBs ever reluctant to share this kind of destination metrics specific to their destination? Um, and then again, people were asking me, 
I'm, you know, curious about different areas throughout your presentation. So how would that they go about that? So a destination, you know, a DMO that provide or purchases data from us is not allowed to republish it. However, they are, you know, kind of the go-to resource for information. So certainly, if someone contacts them, more than likely the DMO is going to be able to provide a high-level overview of, you know, how their market is doing. Um, if for some reason you run into a CVB that's not willing to share that information, or you just need more details than, than they can provide, you know, certainly let us know, and you know, that's something we can work with you on. Um, in terms of specific destinations, you know, we put out monthly and weekly press releases for our top 25 markets, and that's all on hotelnewsnow.com. Um, so I would certainly, um, you know, suggest that you go take a look at that if there are any individual markets and you want to get, you know, more detailed information. Um, feel free to, to let us know. That's a great resource. Yeah, yeah that's a great resource. Check with your um, DMO first and then H&N. Yeah, and, and to kind of follow up on that, Elaine, I think that um, DMOs are, CVBs are actually wanting to have these conversations with customers. I think that they are hoping that more customers are more forthcoming with wanting to understand the marketplace and and not really delivering that blind RFP out there and being frustrated that just maybe 10 hotels fit your, you know, program on paper and then you have a conversation and then you find out based on rate parameters or specific needs that you know, really probably only five actually fit in actuality and then that gives you you know an opportunity not to waste so much of your time and and probably not to waste so much of a lot of uh, hotels times and and you're not getting the kind of responses that you're wanting. Elaine I saw a um, and I hope it's not late in the conversation, but I did see one question, um, Lindsay, and I think so often this is something we're really um, not good at in our industry is um, asking for a definition of REVPAR and ADR. Yes, and I apologize that um, for that, but ADR as average daily rate and REVPAR is revenue per available room. So REVPAR is really what hoteliers are looking at, um, you know, in comparison. That's probably their most important KPI that they're looking at is their REVPAR or REVPAR percent change. So in terms of growth over prior year, how much is their revenue growing for each available room that they have. That's great. Elaine, any other specific questions? Well, there was one other definition, one, the, uh, the term unaffiliated. Uh, Lindsay, is that um, as it related to maybe different hotels? Someone had asked how that terminology had been used. Yeah, so that was probably in the pipeline section. So the unaffiliated are just those projects that, as of right now, do not have a brand selected for them. So they would be considered independent properties. Now, some of them, by the time they open, may select a brand, um, or they may not, and they'll end up as an independent property. Great. Um, so lastly, I know we were talking more North American specific, correct? Um, but the question was asked about how does this compare for international destinations? It's certainly going to be different for every market around the world. However, we track all that information. Um, so certainly let us know or check out Hotel News, Hotel News Now um, to find out um, you know, performance for the market you're interested in. That's great, great, Lindsay. Thank That's you. And th thanks, E. Hey, oh, and I did see one specific um, question about any data for Austin, Texas, specifically. And so I would encourage Kurt to reach out to our good friends at the Austin CBB. You can ask for Steve Genovese and tell him that Terry Roberts sent you from the webinar. I know Steve would be happy to um, discuss any occupancy data and, and the trends going on in Austin. There's another hot growing destination for sure. So um, thank you all for joining us. Please again look in your spam or in your email folders next week for your certificate as well as our webinar recording. We hope you'll share it perhaps with your peers or others that you think who might be interested in getting all the great information that Lindsay shared with you today. Next month um, I think we have a really interesting webinar. It's called the 10 stupid things we all do.
to mess up our site inspections. So site inspections is always a very hot trending topic for us on our webinars. Um, and in your follow-up email, you'll get a link to register for next month's webinar. So don't don't miss out because uh, we all want to avoid any of the stupid things we, we all do. So thank you again, everyone. Um, great webinar. Really enjoyed having you, Lindsay. We appreciate your support. And Chris, um, again, thank you each month for um, ePro joining us as a partner. Our pleasure. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon.